thank you for the opportunity to talk a little bit about container usage at NERSC. I'm Shane Cannon. I'm a staff member at NERSC in the Data Analytics and Services Group. Um, just briefly about me, I have 20 years of experience in high-performance computing and data-intensive computing. And over my career, the focus has really been on enabling scientists to, to use these large-scale systems to tackle their, you know, their biggest and most challenging problems. And over the past five years or so, six years, I've really um, you know, become an evangelist for using containers in high-performance computing and scientific computing. Uh, and this is both through uh, the Shifter project, which I was, uh, I'm a developer on, as well as the ECP Super Containers project. Uh, and I'm involved in some other projects as well. Uh, it's just a brief recap of containers at NERSC and sort of the history of containers at NERSC. Um, prior to really the emergence of containers as we think of them today, uh, we had something called CHOS that was Cherud OS that was really meant about to provide customized environments for large projects. And this was really useful, but I think when we saw the emergence of Docker, uh, we saw like a, a solution that really looked attractive and was much more flexible than what we were able to do with, with CHOS. And so initially that was just uh, a prototype was just a thin wrapper around Docker that we called MyDoc. And this was valuable in showing us the, the potential for this approach. And this led to the development of Shifter, which was really focused on creating an HPC, uh, a runtime for HPC environments that would address security, scalability, and performance uh, in a clean way. And uh, uh, within a few years, we had seen adoption of that and including the first full-scale uh, job on Quarry using containers. So really showed that it wasn't just being used for small-scale jobs, it was being used for all scales. Uh, and more recently, uh, we've started using uh, deploying services or systems, a platform to support uh, containerized services called SPIN, and I'll talk a little bit more about this uh, in a few slides. And so that went into production, and now we've been migrating to the uh, the latest version of Rancher Rancher 2, which is Kubernetes-based. So this is really our first uh, foray into Kubernetes. Uh, just a little bit about the numbers. This is um, it's a little bit dated, but it shows a distribution of the largest uh, projects that are the projects that use the, the most uh, container usage at NERSC and where they come from. So a lot of these come from the high energy physics community or other experimental um, uh, data analysis projects, uh, which is where we've seen the, the biggest use of containers. We also see it in genomics and other spaces as well. And, uh, you know, from when we first introduced it back in 2014, 2015, we've seen it go from, you know, a, a percent to now we typically see six to eight uh, percent these days. And I will say that that is um, bracketed by uh, how we're measuring this. This is users that submit the container as part of their job submission. They can also just run it within a job and, and that we are not able to see. So that number is probably low, and it's, um, but we're not sure just how much larger it could be. And we've, over that time, we've seen 7,000 unique different images that users have pulled down and run, and over 900 unique users, uh, you know, over the full time span. Uh, I alluded to Spin. So Spin is our, plat our platform for, for supporting containerized edge services. So these include things like databases, science gateways, workflow management systems, um, and other kind of networked ac uh, access services. Uh, these oftentimes complement the HPC system. So uh, there may be jobs that are interacting with these services, for example, or the jobs may generate data that's then served out by these, uh, by these services. And uh, this is based on Rancher. We originally deployed it with Rancher 1.6, and then we've recently made started the migration to Rancher 2, which is based on Kubernetes. And we've had, I think, close to 100 projects that have used this uh, system. So it's been very successful. Um, and these uh, services or these uh, projects span all different domains. 
just a little bit about what's happening right now. Um, you know, the focus is still on trying to make containers easier and more productive for our users. Uh, there's the ECP Super Containers project uh, that may have already been discussed that is really looking at trying to identify best practices, create um, kind of gold standard images, things like that. Uh, we're also looking at ways to run uh, Shifter in a completely unprivileged mode uh, using things like squash views and, um, and namespaces. We're also looking at uh, continue to do incremental improvements to Shifter. So for example, we've improved the support for some of the newer image uh, standards uh, just recently and continuing to look at ways to provide kind of hardware optimized uh, images. We're also recently have been really looking at Podman and maybe it's a potential long-term replacement for Shifter, but for now what we're really looking at is a solution so that users could build images uh, inside NERSC in a, a secure way. So uh, we haven't rolled this out in production, but it's looking very promising. And then, as I mentioned, we're in the process of migrating all of our spin, uh, original spin Rancher 1.6 users over to this new Rancher 2 system, which is a, a pretty, pretty large effort. And then looking further out, our next big system is Perlmutter. This is going to be a Cray Shasta based system. And what we're really excited about with this is, you know, this is going to be the first case where containers and Kubernetes are really tightly integrated system. It's part of how you manage it. And there's even models for how that could be extended to users. So I think this is gonna be really exciting. I think it's gonna open up a lot of um, flexibility and new modes of execution, um, but it's gonna be a big challenge in how we integrate these kind of two different worlds and you know the sort of traditional HPC batch system with this uh, new kind of Kubernetes managed approach. So I think there's a lot that we'll need to learn uh, over the next couple of years about how to how to do that. So thank you again, and I look forward to the discussion later.